welcome to ET webinar powered by Plant Series 7. In the recent sessions that we have uh, covered different aspects of MSME lending, but today's session will be specially focusing on MSME rank, how you can calculate it, how uh, actually, uh, what are the benefits, uh, how you can improve the MSME rank. All of this will be covered in today's session. I am joined by Mr. Vipul Mahajan, who's head commercial products, uh, TransUnion Civil. Uh, he's with us and the video will be available very soon. Vipul has been responsible very closely for managing solutions for commercial lending, all types of commercial lending in India. And uh, thank you, Vipul, for joining in. Uh, so before we get into the uh, you know, importance of a single company rank and the, uh, you know, how it is calculated, uh, tell us what exactly CMR stands for. Sure, Balavi. Thank you so much. And apologies for the difficulties uh, to start uh, a couple of minutes late. Uh, but today we have a very important agenda at hand. We will be talking about civil MSME rank. It's a great score for MSMEs. Uh, it's been uh, used by banks and NBFCs to give credit to MSMEs for now more than, about more than two years, about close to three years now. And what's the importance that this rank actually plays in, in the life of an MSME to get a credit, in the life of a credit underwriter to, to accurately uh, decide about whether giving a credit to an MSME or not. Uh, I think that's the agenda that we have uh, for today. So let me quickly dive in. Uh, these, this is the six point agenda that we will be discussing uh, very quickly today. As I said, simple MSME rank is the credit score for MSMEs. What is exactly credit score means, we'll get into that uh, very, very quickly. But just to give an overview to everybody, uh, first we'll talk about what civil MSME rank is. And CMR is the short of uh, civil MSME rank. Uh, second, uh, we will jump on to how actually it's calculated. There's a query that I get from a lot of uh, different people that what actually goes behind civil MSME rank and you talk a little bit about that. So today we will try to demystify that and we will see what actually makes civil MSME rank. Third, we will get into the difference between different CMR uh, ranks. So from CMR 1 to CMR 10, it's a 10 rank uh, scoring uh, algorithm and what the final outcome actually looks to be what's the difference between each one of these uh, rank values is what we will also talk about fourth we will move to the ways to improve cmr so how can uh, civil msme rank uh, be improved if your cmr rank is is low or or uh, you know you want to be able to improve it fifth is about how can you check proactively uh, to know what your civil msme rank is and how can you probably then work upon the improvement of that? And six is from a perspective, what are the actual benefits of having a good civil MSME rank? I will also bring out some case studies here, how different lenders in the country are actually using the CMR. So why it's important for you to maintain a good CMR and for a lender that how well can you make use of civil MSME rank? So let's quickly dive in uh, about what civil MSME rank actually is. As I've been saying thus far, is it? before you start with the presentation, I would like to remind all the attendees that if you have any queries from the poll on all of these topics, you can send us your questions uh, as we go through the presentations. And at the end of the session, uh, we'll, we will will be answering all your queries. Uh, Bipul, you can go ahead. Absolutely. Thanks, Palavi, for that. Uh, yes, you can send in all your questions uh, while I'm going through the uh, the presentation about civil MSME rank and at the end of it, about 30 minutes or so, at the end of it is when we will uh, take up all the questions that you have. Uh, so uh, civil MSME rank is a credit score for MSMEs. What actually a credit score is, credit score is basically a statistical number that comes out of a, of a statistically built algorithm. These algorithms are typically built uh, over by studying data by, of more than probably five years, 10 years worth of credit data. And these algorithms actually talk about the credit worthiness of a borrower. If you are actually going in, uh, out in the market to be able to take credit, the these credit these statistically built algorithms about a credit score actually helps a lender understand what's the probability of repaying a loan in time. Uh, that's what basically makes a credit score. Now, for civil MSME rank specifically, what are the type of companies that are actually eligible to get a civil MSME rank? 
uh, uh, any company which has a credit facility where the financial institution opened ever in last 24 months uh, is eligible. So what does this actually means is that if you have a credit facility in a form of overdraft facility or a term loan facility or a letter of credit or a bank guarantee, any different shape and form of credit facility, with any bank or any NBFC ever in last 24 months, then you first you are eligible. The second eligibility criteria, this is also mandatory to get a civil MSME rank is the aggregate credit exposure among all these type of credit facilities is between 10 lakhs and 10 crores. So if the credit exposure is above 10 crores or if the credit exposure is below 10 lakhs, civil MSME rank is not generated for these set of borrowers. You only get a credit information report from TransUnion Civil. Now, uh, with this eligibility, currently in the entire country, over 30 lakh companies are eligible for a civil MSME rank. So more than 30 lakh companies in the country today have a live CMR running. Now, as I briefly mentioned that a credit score is a statistical algorithm. So CMR is also a statistical algorithm, which analyzes last 24 months of credit information about a company to assess the actual CMR rank. The end CMR rank value comes in the shape and form of CMR 1 to CMR 10. CMR 1 being the least risk or the best rank, as we say, and CMR 10 being the highest risk or, or you know, or the it's, it's the highest value of the rank that actually can be. With that a uh, small background about what Sibyl MSME rank actually is, let me move to how it's actually calculated. So civil MSME rank CMR is built on two classic principles of credit risk. First principle being the entity's ability to pay back its debt. So whether an entity has enough cash flows to sustain paying back the debt that it is borrowing from a lender, that's the first measure that's checked under CMR. Second measure that's also checked under CMR is the entity's intention to pay back its debt. This, uh, even if an entity has the ability to pay back but doesn't have the intention to pay back the debt, that's a second pillar that's actually assessed. The, these are the two fundamental pillars of credit risk on which CMR is actually built. Now, what are the measures that actually go behind making this credit uh, risk assessment inside CMR? The first bucket, so th there are more than probably 50 algorithms that are running behind generating a CMR rank. These 50 algorithms try and understand an MSME company from various different angles, from various different aspects to be able to see that, the, to triangulate and see this is the true uh, CMR for a borrower. A CMR for every borrower is different at every given point in time in their credit life cycle is different. So for a company, a CMR today may be different than the CMR that they will actually see tomorrow or one month later or one year later. Why? Because all these 50 parameters about that company keeps changing and evolving over a period of time. Now, what these parameters are looked at while assessing a CMR? I think the first one is a bucket of uh, liquidity risk type of parameters. These uh, parameters are actually be able to assess whether uh, entities uh, liquidity is under stress or not. Basically, what we're trying to do here is that trying to understand the cash flows of an entity and see whether these cash flows are stressed or not stressed. These liquidity risk uh, uh, variables work independent of the fact of whether the company has a default, doesn't have a default or, or anything. Even if a company is absolutely making all the payments in time, everything is in uh, made in time, still it's an assessment towards whether the cash flows are stressed or not, whether the company has enough liquidity to pay back the debt or not. Uh, th these variables are triangulated using different uh, uh, understandings about how you're actually using your current credit facility to be able to understand what the liquidity scenario of the company is. Second type of variables are actually firmographic type of variables. These firmographic uh, uh, variables are independent of a transaction behavior of a company. So what I mean by transaction behavior is your credit repayment pattern. If you keep those ones aside, firmographic type of variables are the ones. So these are not the exact variables inside the model, but these are some of the examples that I'm sharing with you, which kind of give you an idea about what a firmographic variable is. If an entity is based out of some deeper geographies, 
uh, and is taking credit, which is a very risky type of a credit, let's say an unsecured type of a loan for a very small ticket size from an unknown lender in the market, a very small lender in the market, it's first time credit uh, that they are taking. It's relatively, let's say a lot more riskier than an established company in the market which is taking credit from a very good location from a very established lender and a very recent size of credit. So these two are very different type of companies in itself, irrespective of their performance. Now I'm not saying these are the exact variables inside the model. The variables are very, very different than this one, but this will give you an idea about what a firmographic variables actually mean. The third set is actually the poor past repayment behavior, which is the classic credit bureau information where you have actually made defaults or not, whether your payments have been defaulted in the past or not, whether you have been making all your credit payments on time or not, are all the EMIs that you're supposed to pay, they're all paid on time or not. If you keep paying all your EMIs on time, your CMR ranks will always be good. So I think these three classic variables are used. Let me repeat it once again. First is the liquidity risk. Second is the firmographic type of variables. And third is your classic repayment behavior, whether you have made your payments on time or not. On these three classic pillars of variables is how CMR is actually calculated. Now, once the CMR is actually calculated, what does that actually mean for a different set of borrowers? Civil MSME rank CMR comes, as I said earlier, in grades from CMR 1 to CMR 10. CMR 1, as I said, is the best rank and CMR 10 is, as I said, is the worst rank, uh, so to say. Now, what you're seeing probably right now on the slide is the probability of default in the next 12 months. So this is a probability that a, a company with a CMR 1 will actually be, be defaulted in the next 12 months. So of all the companies that get CMR 1 in the entire country, 1.1% of them actually default in next one year. Another way to look at this number is 98.9% .9 of the companies do not default in next one year if you are CMR1. That's a very, very large proportion of CMR1 which will not default. This gives bankers a lot of confidence in lending to CMR1, CMR2, CMR3, CMR8, CMR5, these type of borrowers. Compared to the other side of the house, which is CMR8, 9, 10, where you can see these percentages are exponentially higher from 44%, 69.7% and 94.5%, these are very, very high default rates, which says that if a company is within CMR 8, 9 or 10, the probability to default is, is very, very high. Probably a lot of these 8, 9, 10 CMR grade companies are already defaulted as of today. So in next one year, what? so in a CMR 8, if a company is already defaulted, what it probably means, it will continue to stay in default. There is a 44% likelihood. So uh, the exponential rising curve across all CMR grades give lenders a lot more confidence in lending to the good CMR customers and compared to the poor CMR customers here. Now, this is what truly actually the differentiation between CMR 1 to CMR 10 means. Now, based on this differentiation, how do banks and NBFCs actually lend? This is how most of the lenders in the country actually disburse loans to MSMEs. 80% of all the MSME loans disbursed in the country are to MSMEs which are CMR 6 or better. That's a very large proportion, 80% of all the credit given, and it lies in the grade better than CMR 6. As you can see, CMR 2, 3, and 4 are really heavy on, on, uh, on, on the full lending perspective. CMR 1 being 2.3% because of the fact that total number of companies in the country with CMR 1 is also very few proportion. So this is a distribution of all the companies taking credit today. So the, if the number of companies are less, the number of companies coming in the market and actually taking credit will also be less. This does not mean actually the bankers give less credit. This means the number of companies available with CMR1 is very, very less. Actually, it's very hard to get CMR1. It's, it's really difficult to get a CMR2. It's relatively easier to get a CMR3, 4, and 5, which are also very good grades. And I would also say it's very hard to get CMR8, 9, and 10. 
if you truly default if a company is truly in a bad credit only then a company is get pushed to cmr 8910 and as you can see there are very few companies who get credit also in that space all these bars if you sum up all the numbers mentioned in the yellow will add up to 100% this basically a distribution of all the loans given in the country and in which cmr grade they actually fall it gives you a good idea saying that a lot of proportion a high proportion of the loans that are currently given in the country are given to the companies which are cmr 6 or better with that let me move to the next point about if you have a poor cmr how you can actually improve it now this goes back to the fact of what i earlier spoke about it's a it's a statistical algorithm which looks at three key pillars of risk liquidity risk firmographic variables and the repayment behavior to be able to predict what the cmr of a company is now if you are able to work on all those three criteria you will be able to actually improve your cmr so what are the couple of areas that you can actually do which are in a company's control to be able to improve a cmr rank first is the repayment of the loans so if you have a term loan type of a facility a loan type of facility where you are supposed to pay an emi every month it's important to make timely emi repayments of all the monthly installments that you are due on it ensure that you do not miss out on any payments uh, for the full tenure of the loan this will keep your cmr grades very healthy in a very good zone second if you have any overdraft type of a facility if you have a od type of facility then the interest gets due on those facilities it's important if you can uh, you know uh, make the interest payments also on time for those overdraft facilities so for an emi type of facility typically your monthly installments are due make those on time and for overdraft facilities typically your monthly interest is due make sure that you make that on time keep the timely repayments on it's more of a credit hygiene that actually you need to maintain second is avoid certain type of misconducts what i mean by these misconducts is sometimes a credit facility can end up going into a temporary extension a temporary overdraft facility for example if a company has 1 crore credit facility and for a very short period let's say for 7 days they want 5 lakhs extra on top of 1 crore they will go into one crore 5 lakh type of a temporary overdraft type of a situation i recommend that you plan your finances well that you don't end up being in that situation if you want a truly line extension you might as well apply to your bank and get a line extended to a one crore 20 lakh or 25 lakh in this scenario but avoid the temporary extensions these temporary extensions kind of denote that your cash flows are not in 100% your order and you are not in 100% control of them hence you are able hence you are going for the temporary extension type of scenarios the next point is about uh, all the non fund based facilities that are there in the market so avoid invoking lc letter of credit and bank guarantee if you have given lc or bank guarantee from a bank or a lender to one of your uh, trader partners uh, ensure that you don't uh, require to invoke those facilities uh invoking those facilities again kind of puts a view saying that your traders and partners are not 100% working as per your agreement terms and your cash flows might again get in stress so these are certain things that you can avoid on and last point i want to talk a little bit about the borrowers who are currently in a default state who if you are currently in a default state it's very important to come out clean fully it's very important if you have three emis overdue make sure you pay all three emis not one not two all three of them it's important to make all the type of overdue payment repaid completely in full not in part in full and lastly if you are currently probably in a zone where you are kind of settling a loan a default loan with one of your lenders again make sure the settlement is done to full and the loan is actually closed in this scenario because in settlement you will be actually closing a loan whereas in over the amounts you will continue to run the loan but at least come back fully clean all i'm trying to make a point is that if you're currently running a default don't try to stay in default by making few payments here and there try to make full clean payments only then your cmr will actually start improving 
the improvements in CMR or the deterioration in CMR are actually gradual in nature. They don't happen overnight to a very sharp jumps. Uh, CMR does not jump very sharply in a, in a month's time. It takes its time. But once it sets a direction, if it's, uh, it is setting a direction towards improvement or deterioration, then after that, it will improve fast. But it's important that you do these steps, some of these steps right, to be able to actually improve your CMR. With that, let me move to the next point about if you are actually a company, how can you check your CMR? And where do you find the civil MSME rank ranking on, on, on the civil website? So first step, actually, from a direct uh, company perspective, you like you check your civil score. You can also check your civil MSME rank from the civil.com website. You can visit the civil.com website. Under that, you can go to the civil rank page and within the company report section and fill in the full form, submit the KYC details, and you can get your credit report. Now, this form is actually basic company details, as you can see. This will involve your company name, your PAN number, company's PAN number, your address, contact information like email address, mobile number, so that we are able to send the report right. It's a very uh, basic looking form, and uh, we require the KYC also alongside with it, so that the CMR is of a company is given to the right uh, authorized party. And once you have submitted all of these details, you kind of get a credit report back from us. Now, a credit report is a report which includes all type of credit information about a company. So this is a sample credit report, which kind of has the, if you look at it from a section two perspectives, section two, the borrower profile in this case. So section one is basic inquiry information. What you put in, in time at the time of ordering the report in the previous page that I showed you, the form that you actually end up filling. Section two will have the company's name, legal constitution, class of activity, sales figures, PAN numbers, office address, different things. In the section three, you actually get to see the civil MSME rank. And this is an area where you will see the actual number. CMR seven in this example is mentioned, CMR dash seven. So the rank value will actually be between one to 10. It can be CMR one to CMR 10, any rank value. So CMR seven is in this case. And you will also see some form of ranking reasons. Ranking reasons are basically the reasons why the rank it is what it is. These are the sometimes two to three bullet points, which talks about if you are a CMR seven, then why you are a CMR seven. So in this case, the example that stated, CMR seven has come because the company is in overdue, but not an NPA right now. NPA is a non-performing asset, which is typically 90 days not made a payment. Overdue is typically shorter than 90 days, but still some payments are, are overdue. So what this CMR7 is because of the reason saying that the company is actually running overdue, but not an NPA. And as I mentioned earlier, it comes as part of the complete uh, credit information report that a company sees. With that, let me move to some of the benefits that uh, CMR rank actually provides. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are some of the benefits that Sibyl MSME rank has. Uh, first and the most important one is the objective and the unbiased uh, uh, nature of Sibyl MSME rank. CMR, as I mentioned earlier, is a statistically written algorithm. What it does is that it puts out an unbiased opinion on the credit worthiness of a MSME without actually bringing in the subjective biases of a human being being actually giving a credit rating or any other shape or form of credit appraisal. These algorithms are built using eight years plus of credit information by studying more than 30 lakhs MSMEs in the entire country. So these are very time tested, very large scale, very big data machine learning type of algorithms, which kind of put an independent opinion about a company's behavior other than bringing in a subjective bias in it. So just because a company is in a poor industry doesn't mean that the CMR will actually be bad. And just because a company actually is in a good industry doesn't mean the CMR will actually be good. This is truly a performance of a company and a rank on top of it. Therefore, it's very important to for everybody to know that it's an independent opinion about the company based on the algorithms that, that are running based on the credit information, credit performance of the company itself. 
Now, second benefit that the CMR has is it can help lenders make credit decisions faster. Lot of lenders today in the in the country have CMR as part of their credit policies in some shape and form. Every lender has different credit policies around CMR, but everybody, lot of them actually uses it to make life easier for the good CMR customers. So if you are in a good CMR zone, the companies can actually get the loans faster usually from most of these lenders. Typically, sometimes your documentation is easier. Sometimes your uh, full loan approval process is made a little easier. Sometimes your turnaround times are uh, shorter. So there are different benefits that are passed on. Sometimes your collateral requirement is lower. So different benefits are passed on based on the bank's credit policies. But typically the benefits are in tune to make your life a lot more hassle-free to get credit from banks. And last one, again, one of the benefits that are actually passed on by the lenders, but a very significant benefit, which I want to specifically mention now, is the lower interest rates. Some of the lenders are actually offering lower interest rates based on CMR. So good CMR borrowers end up getting lower interest rates on, on, uh, on, on, on the loans that they're actually applying to lenders. Now with that, let me actually show you a couple of specific examples about what's happening in the market. Uh, so this is an example of Oriental Bank of Formers, where uh, this from the press uh, release of Financial Express on uh, earlier this year in January 2019, where OBC has said that they will give 25 bips, uh, so 0.25% worth of concession on interest rates to MSMEs with CMR 1 to CMR 3. Now, since CMR is a machine learning algorithm build, uh, you know, which predicts probability of uh, um, MSME become NPA in the next 12 months, they're kind of using this as a tool to be able to give interest rate benefits to good, good CMR customers. Second example is very similar from Bank of Baroda. Bob on the other side also uh, recommends uh, providing interest rates benefits to the companies which are better CMR grade. This is from their recent post in uh, as recent as about two months back in July 2019, where they have said that we will have a hassle-free documentation, simplified process also if you have a better CMR. Third sample that I've brought in here is again as recent as uh, June 2019, uh, very recent development on where a UK SINA committee was formed to recommend certain improvements for MSMEs uh, by RBI and they submitted their report in June 2019. In the report that they submitted, one of the recommendations was made to use CMR as part of the credit information, uh, you know, uh, one of the credit decisioning factor in time at the type of underwriting uh, MSME credit. It's also very useful to monitor, uh, you know, ongoing credits. So from a surveillance perspective where the credit needs to get reviewed every year annually, it's a revolving type of a facility. That's where also it's very, very uh, useful to use CMR. Now with those uh, sample benefits, I would like to probably open the floor for questions. But Pallavi, just before I open the floor for questions, let me go back to the first slide, which is the very basics of, uh, you know, civil MSME line, that it's a credit score for MSMEs. A credit score is typically a statistical algorithm. Civil MSME rank comes for the borrowers which have an aggregated credit exposure between 10 lakhs to 10 crores taken by any financial institution in the last 12 months, ever in last 12 months. Again, it's available for more than 30 lakh companies in the country. And it comes as a number from one to 10, one being the least risk and 10 being the highest risk. And right. CMR uses last 24 months of information about the company to be able to actually generate a rank. Right. Okay, just to remind the attendees, if you have uh, any questions, you can still send us. We will be taking up those questions one by one. We've already received a lot of questions and let's start with Sanjay's question. Uh, he says, sure. model stability of CMR ranking between uh, one to five and those between eight to 10. What is the difference between external credit rating and CMR rating? Which one is better? And if you could explain. 
So uh, I think it's a good question. What's the difference between an external rating and a, and a, and a CMR rank? I think external credit ratings to MSMEs are given on a case-to-case -case basis where uh, an MSME's financials are actually studied on a case-to-case -case basis and, and it's given. These ratings are uh, comprehensive in the nature that they will study company's financial information also, whereas CMR does not study a company's financial information. It's purely based on the credit performance of the company. And the second and the most important point is the objectivity and the subjectivity involved uh, in both the scenarios. Ratings are typically subjective in nature where a rating analyst will provide a judgment based on his view, his or her view. Whereas in this case, it's absolutely objective in nature. Here is the algorithm, here is the performance, here is the actual CMR rank. So there is no human being involved. Uh, so there is no human partiality that actually comes into picture. And last important uh, difference is CMR is available at a much larger scale. 30 lakh companies having a CMR is probably the largest credit scoring algo available in the entire country today. We have a few more questions. Uh, Seva Garg has sent us a question. She wants to know the uh, how can ability be assessed from financials? Uh, but how can intentions be assessed? So we've already, uh, you know, spoken about it, about uh, the quarters yes. and full the quarters. So that's what she wants to know, that how the ability can be assessed with this fact. So, uh, so ability is is more around the liquidity risk is how we try to assess that ability is whether when even you have the intention but you're not able to pay back the loan is typically because your cash flows are stressed. So CMR tries to see uh, how you are making good your credit payments. So, for example, if you have a term loan worth one crore and you are supposed to make a, a EMI payment worth, let's say, one lakh rupees every month, and you end up paying five lakh suddenly, you're probably flushed with cash. That's these are the certain very very small nuances that something that CMR actually ends up picking up. Or whereas if you have a overdraft facility and you are you are running a ninety nine percent utilized on that, so probably you're just running on the borderline. These are certain small, small nuances. There are many such nuances which actually CMR picks up to assess the liquidity, which kind of puts under the bracket of ability to be able to pay back the debt. The intention to pay back the debt is classic repayment behavior. But even when your liquidity is, is high, but still you're actually defaulting. Still you're actually missing out on your EMI payments. Still you're actually not making your interest payments. So classic repayment behaviors get triangulated from there. So both the behaviors are getting captured while making the CMR assessment. So we have another question from Abhinav and Abhinav says, can I check MSME civil for my customer? That's a very interesting question. He says, my customer is not an MSME mm -hmm. uh, and is a proprietor or maybe a partnership. Can I still check their civil? So let me answer it in, uh, with, in two ways. First, a lot of civil MSME rank is is uh, is actually on proprietorship and partnership firms. 60 to 70 percent of civil MSME rank is for proprietorship and partnership firms. So that's the type of scale. Only then you will have 30 lakh companies uh, in in the country. Second, for your customers, you will have to currently the way the framework is, you will have to request your customer to come to civil.com get their civil MSME rank by themselves and share that with you. Because currently there is no provision for a third party to check civil MSME rank on somebody else's behalf. You will have to check on your on your behalf. After you get the report from civil.com, then you're free to share it with anybody you want. We have another question from Naveen. It says, how can we know the cash flows of a particular borrower? So I think I kind of addressed that in one of my earlier questions where I was speaking about the liquidity risk piece of it. Uh, you, in civil MSME rank, these cash flows are getting already addressed by looking at how the credit is being paid back, where how timely payment of the debt and what proportion of the debt gets paid off when there are many different algos to be able to address that. But civil MSME rank is kind of understand the cash flows and make an assessment towards the liquidity risk. Okay. So 
So the next question is from Farhan, and uh, he says even a firmographic variables, if you can explain that term as well, are evaluated for the past 24 months. Yes, so even the firmographic variables are evaluated for past 24 months, but it's a good question. Uh, firmographic variables typically don't end up changing. So the concept of using last 24 months in firmographic variables is not that high. It's probably static, current in nature, but still there are small, small nuances which may, uh, which may have past 24 months history into it, but largely they are current in nature. Okay. Yeah, it's typically the repayment behavior and the liquidity information where last 24 months assessment is actually made. Firmographics are more current in nature. Okay, uh, let's uh, move on to the next question. Kamal Agarwal is a question. He says, how can we know the civil score of a particular firm? So for a particular firm, the the so the lookalike or the the similar product like a civil score is actually CMR, civil MSME rank. Mm -hmm. And for a firm to check a civil MSME rank, you'll have to come to civil.com website, uh, which I kind of covered very quickly here, is you have to land civil.com website, fill a page of, of what the information of the company that you're looking for, and you submit the KYC information of that company make the payment and then you can actually check. It's typically has to be your own company only to, to check the civil MSME rank. Right, even um, next question that is not directly related to the topic, but he wants to listen to your guidance uh, on other resources. So I would like to tell Raja that if you want to, uh, you know, listen to the webinar after the session, you can uh, go onto our website and also check it on our YouTube channel. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, what is a good CMR range? And it's uh, divided the question in different parts. Uh, though you covered all of this in the presentation, what is the difference uh, between uh, credit rating and CMR? Then how much time does it take to get a CMR rank? And do all banks use CMR? Uh, so, uh, those are, uh, uh, thanks, uh, Pallavi. Those are a lot of questions. Let me take one by one. I think the rating question we already took. Uh, what is a good CMR range? So, uh, let me say that 8, 9, 10 are, are not good CMR. Typically, 8, 9, 10 or 7, 8, 9, 10 are not good CMRs. Uh, that does not mean that 1 to 6 is all good. We typically say 1 to 6 is good, but 1 to 3 is very good range. So if, if a company is within one, two, three, that's actually what we call is a very, very good range. But four, five is also pretty good. Six is also good. From seven, eight, nine, ten 10 is typically the poor CMR range actually kind of starts. Second question about, uh, you know, how many, uh, how much time does it take? Uh, that's a good question, actually. So CMR is typically instant in nature. Uh, uh, it's it's calculated real time live. So for a lender checking uh, 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 CMR, either ideally they will be ideally using one of the login ID passwords given by Sybil to go to our website and download the credit report, which is instant real time in nature, or they will be using an API connectivity to get it in real time in nature. For a company to check it, you have to fill up this form that's there on the screen. And then once the KYC is verified, it's immediately sent out, sent back. So it's typically real time in nature. And the last question about how many lenders currently in the country use it. Yeah. So over 50% of the, uh, you know, all the credit given in the country is using civil MSME rank. Majority of the top 20 lenders, almost like all, majority of the top 20 MSME lenders in the country use civil MSME rank. So it's very, very widely used, I would say. In fact, the second oh, excuse me. Is asking the relevance, uh, he wants to know how is air rating different from So I think I answered again a rating and a CMR question earlier. So uh, I will not specifically want to say that how care rating is actually different, but how ratings are different than CMR, I think we addressed that point earlier. Oh. Uh, next question says if it was continue and uh, company has a low cash flow and would like to settle some of the default amounts, uh, what is going to happen? I mean, probably he wants to know how it will impact the ranking. 
Yeah, so if the cash flows are uh, not very strong and, and the company is actually in default, then the CMR will obviously be in poor range, uh, will will be in one of the high, uh, you know, CMR ranges, more like 8, 9, 10 it might end up being. Uh, right. This scenario, if you're actually settling a loan one-time settlement, then I recommend after when you make the settlement, make it full and clean, close it completely and take a fresh credit and use it in a much more hygienic way. Only then the CMR will actually end up improving. We have she says Sorry, Pallu, we go ahead. is from Rishi. He says, while recommended to the RBI or any other PSU banks, are there any different ratings or parameters of rating? So, uh, um, Pallavi, let me repeat the question if I heard it right. Uh, the question is that uh, uh, to RBI, uh, when it's recommended, is the you know CMR ranking, how is it recommended to RBI? Is that the question? So, uh, Rishi wants to know that uh, all the, as you mentioned that more than 50% of the banks are using this. He wants to know, is there any other different rating or a different parameter of rating by okay. PSU bank? Okay, so a lot of public sector banks and private sector banks typically have internal ratings. Uh, they have internal rating models. So I think what RBI has been recommended is that when you have your internal rating models, use CMR also as an in input to it. So it kind of goes inside. So their internal rating model will have financial information, business information, many other sets of information. CMR also to be used as part of it for credit underwriting. I think that's what RBI has kind of been recommended by the UK CNR report. Okay. Uh, next question uh, is uh, where is the MSME rank calculator on where is it calculated on? So it's calculated uh, by Sybil uh, as per the request. It's it's uh, it's an in-house uh, solution. So you can come to Sybil.com website or if you are a lender, then you can go to the transunionsybil.com and the standard process that you may be using to use a credit information report. It's calculated. It's an application which generates uh, Sybil MSMA rank. Yeah. How it was created, it was created using a lot of statistical analysis, a classic uh, modeling techniques that were used to build it. Okay. Uh, next question is by Amandeep. He says, if uh, CMR rating generates itself once uh, MSME enrolls for a loan or some other registration is required. No, so uh, CMR rating gets generated. Yeah, I heard it. Uh, I got that. So CMR is generated. The question if CMR rating generates itself once MSME enrolls for it, for or or is there any other process that, that is required to you know register for a CMR? Yeah, I got that, Pallavi. Thank you. Uh, so CMR is generated uh, by civil uh, at every given point of time. Now, uh, once you have taken credit. It, there is no separate registration required or anything else required for it. Whereas there is civil.com website registration on the form is required if you want to check it. Or by lender, they have to come to civil and actually check it. So for checking, you will have to fill up a registration and get it checked. For us to create it, there is nothing required. We have created, we have kept it ready for everybody. Okay. We have few more questions and we'll try to talk as well. Sure. Your audio isn't audible. Uh, can you hear me now? Pallavi, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Uh, there are a few more questions. We'll try to pick up as many. Uh, sure. Mega. Can you hear the question, Vipul? No, I did not hear the question. Pallavi, I did not hear the question.
are you there Vipul? yes i'm here pallavi are you able to hear me now yeah yeah so we'll take up just last uh, two questions uh, mega had asked, asked us a question about can poor external ratings be upgraded with a better cmr so currently external agencies uh, uh, in my understanding don't factor cmr as part of the ratings that they actually provide so straight answer to this would currently be no but while the fundamentally a good cmr company will also should ideally in an ideal scenario have external rating also good but that's a, again an assumption that's just based on basically good uh, financial health uh, that both should get correlated in nature but currently cmr is not a direct input inside an external rating agencies to be able to create uh, ratings all right uh, since all right. we're running out of time we'll just take a one last uh, sure purvas wants to know that the company uh, has not made any default in the last 10 years and not even a single check return but still the company rank is 9 so he wants to know uh, how is that possible i mean since we've already discussed about the different parameters and the basis of which yeah, the sure. rank is calculated no no sure i think uh, it's a it's a good question uh, good that we have actually taken it uh, uh, you know so uh, one important point i think i will also try to address using this question itself is you when you check your ranks on civil.com uh, and you actually go and see what the rank actually is uh, you sh will also be able to raise any dispute that you may have that if you don't think that this default belongs to you or if you don't think that the bank has rightly uh, submitted your information to Sybil or they have wrongly marked you as a defaulter or something like that, uh, there is a process to raise a dispute on Sybil.com itself. So in these type of scenarios where you think you have a CMR 9, but actually uh, you have not made any wrongdoings to actually get a CMR 9, you will be able to raise out your disputes and 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 uh, you know civil will actually intermediate with the bank and you to get that result all right so with that let's wind up the session today thanks a lot Vipul, for your time and that's about it for this session uh, we'll be back with another more interesting session thanks a lot for being with us thank you so much palavi and thank you everybody for joining in today